For this one, I'm going to show you all how to turn any still 2D images like this and turn it into an epic 3D scene like this one. Now, before we can start this tutorial, all credits goes to Zilu Studios, the creator of this AI generated image in Leonardo AI. In order to create this effect, we actually have to expand this image because we cannot work with this. It's way too small. So the first step is to expand this image by going to the crop tool. You want to hold Alt and drag this out to expand your image. From here, you want to click on generate and let Photoshop fill in this missing gap right here. Once it's filled in, we then want to once again expand this even more because for the camera to fly around, we have to have a lot of space, especially in the background. You want to once again click on Generate. And there we go. Once it's finished processing, you can go into the first tool. And then from here, if you wanted to add yourself additional layers, such as the arch pillar that I added, you can use the polygonal lasso tool. You would get yourself a selection of where you want it to appear. Connect it up. Once again, go to generative fill and just type in the specific words that you want it to be. And then go ahead and press generate. Once it's done loading, you can also add yourself additional extras such as this one. I just simply typed in a golden eagle statue. And eventually I got across this one right here. Now, in order to create this effect, we need to separate everything in this image in its own separate layer. The reason for this is because if we have a look at this image, everything looks flat. But as we all know, in reality, everything has different distances between the person, the pillar, and the background. So realistically speaking, it would look something like this if we were to separate it in its own separate layer. Starting on the pillar first, this will be at the front. We would have the person, we would have three, four, five, and six. Now this is very important because you need to correctly put everything in the right order in order for the camera to fly through your scene and give it that 3D look. So what you can do from here is you can, first of all, cut out your generated image, such as the pillar. This one is really easy because you can use the object selection tool and this will quickly pick this up and detect your object. Now, when it comes to the background, there is multiple different ways and so many different tools that you can use. Now, if you're looking for a quick tool, then you can use the quick selection tool. And with this one, you would select the background, you would get yourself a selection around the person, and then also go around the rocks. But the only downside to this one is you will have to tell it which areas you don't want it to include. So you will need to subtract the areas you don't want and include the areas that you do want to keep. So with this one, you can get a fairly good result if you spend a little bit longer and you can zoom in, you can be more accurate. Personally, for me, this one isn't as accurate and it doesn't really give me great results. So I prefer using the pen tool. This one gives you really good results, but like I said, it can be very time consuming because what you have to do with this one is you have to left click on the edge. You would left click again, drag this out and curve yourself the line. You can then hold Alt, cancel that, and then continue going all the way around.
Now, once you've gone all the way around your second layer, it will look something like this. You would go to selection, set this to zero, since we want it to be nice and sharp. And all you need to do is go ahead and press Control or Command and J. This will duplicate it and separate this from the background. You then want to do the same for the next layer, which is going to be this one right here, going down around the two rocks right here, and then this arch support. So once again, go to selection, press OK, and then press Control or Command and J. This will then give you these two separate layers by itself. And this will also create another problem, which we have to fix in Photoshop. Now, the next problem is the fact that if you overlap two layers on each other, eventually the camera will capture the two different clones on the image. So what we need to do is we need to also hide this layer and we have to remove the person's feet. We have to remove this rock. Now, the great thing about this is that in Photoshop, we can do this by copying this selection right here. So we don't have to select it again. We would subtract the person's selection with the polygonal lasso tool. And then all you need to do now, go to generative fill and click on generate. And there we go. We can either select one, two, or three. Personally, I like the second one and we can definitely settle with this one. Once you're happy with the results, we're also going to cut out this area right here. You can keep it or cut it out completely up to you, but if you get yourself a selection, we can invert it. And then by using the bucket tool with a black color, we can subtract this area right here. And now if you bring back the other one, which is this one right here, you can see no matter if we change the scale of this, it won't really affect the one underneath it. You then want to go ahead and save each and every layer one by one as a separate image in a folder ready to be used in Adobe After Effects. Now, once you're inside of After Effects, we're going to create a new composition with these settings and then press OK. We're going to drag and drop the materials and the layers into the timeline. You just want to make sure that all of your layers are in the correct order, starting from the first one all the way to the last one. Now, once you've got yourself all of your layers, we're just going to select them all. And what you want to do is you want to use the pick whip and select all of your layers back to the first one. What this will do is this will parent all of your layers onto the first one. So basically, if you change the position of the first one, it will automatically apply it to all of them at the same time. This just makes it so much easier because we can now focus on the main shot and the main angle that we wanted to focus on. So for the sake of this video, we want the main angle to focus on the person on the screen. So we're just going to center the person right here. Once you're happy with your position, we can ungroup and unparent these layers right here. So in order to turn this into a 3D scene, we have to convert these into a 3D layer. We can do this by switching modes and then enable this 3D looking cube. This will give you the option for the Y, X and Z options. Now we also want to include a video. This is optional if you wanted to add yourself a video to bring some life into your scene. So for me, I have this Firefly video that I want to apply onto the scene. So I'm just going to drag it into here and I'm going to apply it between two and three. We're just going to mute this layer since we don't need the sound. We can press S for scale and set this to 200. So it fits onto the screen. And we also want to switch over to the modes and set this to screen. Now, what this will do is it will ignore the black background and only focus on the fireflies in this video. So from here, we're also going to switch back to the mode and also turn this into a 3D layer as well. Now, if your video is playing way too quick for your scene, so let's say, for example, your video is really quick and you want it to slow it down, you can actually right click on this layer, 
go to pre-comp, call this one Firefly, leave all attributes into here, and then press OK. From here, we're going to right click, and you want to go to Time, and enable Time Remapping. From here, we're going to set a keyframe by going further out. And basically, if you have the keyframes really close to each other, the animation will be really quick. And if you move them further away, the animation will be nice and slow. So the higher the FPS your video is, the smoother the animation will be as well. Now that we've got ourselves the video imported and we also have the different layers, we're going to focus on the new scene, which is this background right here. So for me, what I like to do in this scene is I like the camera to fly down from the ceiling, look at the person, slowly zoom in, and then fly through this eyeball right here into a new scene. But once you've got it planned out, we're just going to press T for the opacity of this layer right here. And we're just going to set the first keyframe to 100 and set the next one or the first one to zero. This will make it fade in. And we want this to happen a little bit later on down the timeline. So now that we've got ourselves the 3D layers, we also need a 3D camera in order to fly around the scene and give it that really cool cinematic look. To get yourself a camera, you go to layer, go down to new and get yourself a camera. Now with this camera, you can give it any name that you want. You can select any preset, whether it's a 50 mil, 80 mil, completely up to you, but you just want to make sure it's a one node camera. So now that we've got ourselves a camera, we need to make sure this is on top and we can switch over to the four views. This will give you a active camera. We have the top view, the right view and the front view. Now what you'll notice is on the right view and the top view, you have this straight line. This straight line represents all of your different layers. And at the moment, they are all inside of each other, which basically means they are overlapping and they are just mashed into one single line. So in order to create that really cool looking effect, we have to separate them by selecting the second one. And by moving the Z axis, we can bring this further back and just separate them from each other. You want to leave a decent gap. You don't want to go too extreme unless you're looking for that really dramatic look to your scenes. So once again, make sure they are all in the correct order. Otherwise, certain parts of your scene will start to disappear. And then the last one, this one as well, bring this one all the way to the back. And there we go. If we have a look at this now, you can see we have a 3D scene, but nothing is happening at the moment. This is simply because, of course, we need to animate this camera and we can do this by pressing P for the position. And we're just going to set this one as default to be here. And we want to move this further out. And we also want to open this up and do the same for the orientation. Now this one is responsible for the camera tilt and also the rotations. So now that we've got ourselves the first two keyframes, like I said before, I want this camera to pan in from the ceiling. So I'm just going to move the Y axis. And I'm also going to zoom in right into this arch corner right here. I'm going to use the arch as a object in the scene. You can also use the top view to offset this slightly to the left. You can rotate the look. And we can also rotate the camera as well. So now if we have a look at this, you will notice the camera will slowly pan down into the scene. and focus on our subject. Now, as you can see by the preview, we have a few problems along the way. The first one being the difference between the background. As you can see, this is the main background right here. And then this is the actual image. 
So in order to fix this, we're going to create a new solid and set this one to the same color as your background. In addition, you can also simply expand your image and that will do the job as well. But a quick, simple fix is to drag this all the way to the bottom. So as you can see, it's now a lot harder to notice the difference. Now, what I like to do is I also like to add in a fade in by once again, getting ourselves a new solid, setting this one to a black color. And by pressing T, we can set the keyframe to 100 on the first one, and then going further out and set this one to zero. This will just give you a nice fade in as the camera pans into the scene. The camera movement is really choppy looking and very plain and boring. It's very linear to how the camera comes down. So what we can do is we can actually change this and make it look a lot better by selecting the keyframes. We can right click on here and set the keyframes to easy ease. What this will do is if you switch over to the graph view, you can see this will smoothen out that camera and make it slowly pan into the scene rather than just one linear line. You can see the difference between this, which is straight, and this. You can see there is a huge difference. You can also drag this further out, and this will just make the animation even smoother and smoothen out those lines. Now, another problem that we run into is also the camera itself. If you have a look at the four views and you look at the camera, we have a very boring and linear line. So what you can do is you can select the top one and you can drag this to curve this line right here. This will curve the path which the camera will follow. So this will smoothen it out, making it look a lot better. And I would say right about here looks good. So now if we have a look at this, you can see we have a really nice smooth animation. From here, we're going to make the camera slowly zoom into the person as well. Once again, creating that intense zoom in effect. We can do this by once again going onto the camera preview. We're going to zoom this in. And we're going to also slightly tilt the camera looking up. And if we have a look at this, the camera will slowly start to zoom in. And then once the camera has zoomed in nice and slow onto the person, we want the camera to fly through past the person into the eyeball. We can do this by going further out and then once again, selecting the camera, we can zoom in all the way to the eye. We can then also slightly change the tilt to let's say around five. And now we're going to go back onto the new scene, which is this one right here. Press T for the opacity. And we want to bring this back to here. So by the time the camera reaches this keyframe, it will start to slowly appear into the scene. Now, at the moment, this image is way too large for the actual scene. So we need to change the scale, set this to somewhere like, let's say, 3%. And if we have a look at where the location is, we just need to change the position, move this further down, and apply it onto here. And if we have a look at this now, you can see it will zoom into the new scene 
And then near the end, what I like to do is I like to pan back up into the sky and loop it back to the first one. So once again, make the camera look up. We're also going to offset this one. So while the camera goes into the new scene, it starts to look up. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go onto the top one and make it fade out as well. Setting this one to zero, going further out and set this to 100. We can then bring the work area back to here. It will smoothly pan up into the next scene. And another thing that I forgot to mention is the camera arch itself. If you go back onto your camera and you go onto your four views, as you can see, if we go back onto this one, as it reaches this one, we have this big curve right here. If your curve is too big and it makes your animation look really strange, you can once again adjust the actual arch itself. You can make it a lot smoother by moving this anchor point right here. So this will smoothen it out, making it look better. And there we go. Now the final touch that I like to do, this makes it look even better, and that is to enable the motion blur on the first one, the second one, third, fourth, fifth, 5.5 and 6. If you enable the motion blur on these layers, what this will do is this will make it so that any objects or if the camera is moving quick, certain objects or scenes will be slightly blurry. And that's pretty much it. With more adjustments, if you want to, you can make this look even better and even smoother, but I'm just going to leave it here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That is how you create the parallaxer effect in Adobe After Effects. You can now bring some life back into your 2D image and convert them into a 3D scene, which looks absolutely epic.